folks, um, I talked about like spray fixing your drawing uh, in the last video. I just want to add this that, you know, you can spray in between your drawing, you know, or in between sort of uh, when you're drawing all these different objects, you can spray fix it when the paper gets saturated and you probably need to. And then, or you can wait till the very end to spray fix it. But bear in mind this, especially at the very end when you put like, several several coats because you really you're done with the drawing and you just want to like spray fix it to make sure that a lot of it stays on your paper just bear in mind that the fixative will darken the value of your drawing so like your highlight may be really bright and then you spray fix it or your light values in your drawing may be really bright and then you spray fix it after like five coats you realize that whoa it's not that bright anymore. Just know that that happens, okay? Fixative will do that to a charcoal drawing, to a pastel drawing, to, you know, like a pencil drawing. Uh, it will definitely knock the value down a few values darker. So just be aware of that, all right? Um, okay, so uh, let's let's get started here. And, and one, one other thing, if you are working with your pastels, uh, and you're layering it quite a bit, just make sure that you don't overwork it. And and it's just something to just bear in mind uh, when you're working with the pastels. You can layer as much as you possibly can on the paper as long as the paper takes it, but don't move it around too, too, too much. Like uh, Because after a while, if your pastel looks really dull, if your colors look really dull on your drawing, it means that you've overworked your pastels, okay? So rarely that happens. Uh, but if that does happen, then you know that that's what you've done. But don't fear, okay? Don't worry. Pastels is very forgiving. Chalk pastel is very forgiving. So if, for example, you may, you put down the color, you hate it, you can't get the color right, you just, just really, there's tons of pastels, you, you, you know, you want to throw away the drawing, don't do that. All you need to do is take your drawing to the trash can, take a, a piece of paper towel or tissue, and just kind of wipe down the pastels. Just kind of wipe it off your paper, and then you can take like a needle eraser and just kind of erase it lightly and just remove most of it, and then continue to draw on top of that. That should be fine, okay? So don't worry if it's not the color that you want and, and you've kind of given up on it. Uh, you can always wipe it off and then uh, draw on top of it, okay? Uh, it's that forgiving. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to make some gray. Remember what I said, don't touch the gray in your pastel set, as tempting as that might be. Don't touch the black, but you can use white and you can use other colors to mix gray, all right? So for example, I'm just going to show you how to mix a cool gray, all right? So you have blue and you have like this umber, which is uh, a cool brown, uh, and we're just going to mix them together. So you, you'll need white, all right? So some students will go ahead and put white first. No, don't do that. Uh, go ahead and put your color down first, all right? So I'm just going to do that really quickly. Notice how like... You know, I'm holding the pastel this way and I'm moving in different directions. Ah, whatever, you know, just have, just gonna have fun with it. All right. I'm just mixing it still. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of white to see what happens, to see what I have. Okay, notice now there's some form of gray, but it looks like it's a little bit brown. So I'm just going to put a hint of that blue. Do you notice now that that's a nice gray right there? Okay, so that's like a pretty cool gray. And sometimes students will tell me, why is my gray so blue? Well, you know, then put another color in there to neutralize that. Okay, so just now it was too brown, so I put a little bit more blue. So then if I want it to be a lighter gray, I just add more white to it. Okay. Um, it, and also it allows me to see what kind of gray I've mixed, whether I need to put more blue or to put more brown, you know, uh, etc. So here, I think maybe I'll just add a hint more blue in there, to cool it down, so then that's a pretty nice cool gray right there. Okay, so um, that's how you make gray. Now, is that the only two magic colors to make gray? No. You can experiment and you should experiment. Just pick different colors, uh, maybe dark colors, 
put them together, just uh, mix them and then add some white to see what you have. Sometimes students will tell me, well, you know, like I use the two same colors that you use, the blue, the cool, the cool brown and, and the blue, and how come my gray doesn't look like this gray? It's probably just like, you know, you just have to find the, the correct percentage of blue to use and the correct percentage of brown to use. It's just a matter of like figuring out how much blue and how much brown to mix that to create the gray that you want. Okay, so let's make another type of gray, all right? So I'm gonna use like an olive green and a violet, and this is more like a cool violet. Maybe I should have a warm violet. Okay, here I have a warm, no, that's not a warm violet. Is that a warm violet? Oh no, is this a warm violet? I can't tell. So this is the other thing, when you're drawing with pastels, please make sure you have enough light around you so that you can see, and this is also, Another thing that's important to remember, if you do this at home and you're doing a color drawing, please make sure that whatever that's illuminating your, whatever light source that's illuminating your paper should be the same temperature that illuminates your uh, still life so that you're working with the same uh, temperature of light uh, because color is definitely affected by uh, your light source, whether it's a cool light source or warm light source. So please make sure that the conditions are the same, okay? So let's try another set of colors here. So I've got an olive green, okay? I've got a violet in here. Just going to get another violet. I think this is a violet in here. Okay, let's try that again. See what happens. Add more violet in there. So you have a different gray now, but it feels like it's much warmer. So then if you want to cool it down, add a hint of that blue that I just used. Okay. That's a little bit. It's like cooking. I don't know, it feels like cooking. <laughs> So you can tell the difference in terms of the temperatures of gray, okay? Um, and so, like I said, all you have to do is experiment. So let's, let's do a little bit more, you know, because, I don't know, because it's kind of fun. So uh, let's do a little bit more here. I put a little bit more of this violet, see what happens. So these grays that you have, it's very different from the gray, or these grays that you just created, is very different from the grays that you will find on your, in your pastel sets because this gray here has chroma in it. It's got some color in it. So because you're using different colors to create the gray. And you need to also use that white to help you see what kind of gray that you are mixing from these different colors. So I would urge you to just experiment. So. Uh, when you're trying to find out, if you, if you look at your pastel, uh, set, I mean your still life setup, and you see that there's some grays in it that you want to emulate, that you want to follow, then figure out whether it's a warm gray or a cool gray, and then proceed to like just experiment with some of your pastel sets, make some colors to see whether you can approximate the gray that you see in your still life setup. Okay, so here again, this is very much blue and uh, a cool brown and some white here. It was like olive green with some violet and I probably use a cool violet. I could use a warm violet, white, I use some blue, you know, and I get, I got a different kind of gray in terms of temperature from the earlier one that I mixed, but they're both gray. So again, it just really depends on what type of gray that you are choosing to emulate in, in your still life, okay? Uh, in your still life drawing. So experiment, take your pastels, make some colors together and put some white. So if you want it to be darker, then don't put so much white in it. Okay. Um, all right. And that's pretty much and And that's about, that's how to mix green. And how do you mix black if you're not allowed to use black from your pastel set? Same thing. Just take maybe all the dark colors that you can find in your pastel set, you know, and I'll just pick up a bunch of colors here that seems quite dark, you know, 
and just mix them. You know, just just kind of put them together. And what's also helpful is that you have black paper that you're drawing on. So that, that kind of helps uh, move things along too. It helps you certainly to get uh, black, all right? It doesn't hurt, okay? I'm not even sure whether you can even see it. Uh, it looks pretty dark in there, all right? So like I said, experiment, that's key. Awesome. Okay, folks, so just to finish up here, so we've created two different uh, grays here with different temperatures. You can see one side is one is a little bit warmer and the other one is a little bit cooler. And like I said, just experiment with your pastels, with your colors, mix and use some white uh, to see what kind of gray that you're mixing from your different colors, okay? But do not put the white down first, okay? There's no need for that. You're just sort of wasting your white, put down your colors first, and then put a little bit white on top of that to see what kind of gray that you're mixing, okay? And then adjust accordingly and get the kind or the type of gray that you want, whether it's warm gray or cool gray, and so on and so forth, okay?